Hej och välkomna till dagens rapportintervju med Sensus Gatso. Tillsammans med mig här i Penso Studio har jag Ivo Mönnik, vd för bolaget. Eftersom Ivo pratar engelska kommer vi här dagen efter att gå över till det engelska språket. Ivo, we're welcome to Penso Studio. Thank you very much. Uh, just to begin with, what is Census Gatso and uh, what's your mission in life? Uh, <coughs> well, we are in the business of automated traffic enforcement, meaning that if you speed or you cross a red light, we our technology enables to take a picture, which then ends up in a speeding ticket or red light ticket for uh, for you. That might sound negative, but it isn't, because in the world every year 1.3 million people die, and that number is increasing. And with this technology, we, we actually assist reducing these numbers. So that's when we talk about the mission of the company is making traffic safer. Mm. But there are also other benefits, environmental, <coughs> fuel consumption, uh, less uh, particles in air, etc. that comes with it. Isn't that true? Oh, that is definitely true. So uh, we, we do uh, have an impact on the development goals of, uh, of, of the United Nations. So we make traffic, uh, traffic safer, but we also make uh, cities more sustainable with our technology. Mm-hmm. It's quite a good mission to it have. It is, yeah. yeah. We're very proud of it. Uh, I think you should be. <coughs> so over to the recently announced uh, quarterly report, uh, the third quarter of 2023. Uh, how would you describe uh, the third quarter of this year from an overall perspective? Um, overall, we're very pleased with it because typically Q3s are a bit slowish. There's the holiday period in between. Our in the order intake instead was really good. Our sales level was solid, uh, a good a good sales level, and our profitability was good as well for the quarter. So overall, very pleased with the results of the quarter and tracking towards our our uh, targets we have given for the year. So very pleased. You, you touched up on the order intake, which was strong. You posted a growth of uh, close to 175%, which is very strong for the third quarter. Uh, in which areas, I think, on product and markets, uh, did you see the strongest growth? Yeah, we see a strong growth coming from the Middle East uh, for now. Um, and that's driven by uh, the Dubai, but also by, by Saudi Arabia, which is uh, a, a, a region where there's a lot of positive development going on. Um, so. That's that's where the strongest growth is coming from. Mm. On top, uh, our business in the United States is continuously growing, you know, time after time. So that's the other part where we see uh, a lot of growth. Mm. Was that the same areas that that uh, drove the growth in sales as well? Would uh, you say? I, would, I would say so. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. <coughs> um, you have uh, also seen a lot of growth in in the troughs revenues, which is of course one of your key 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 targets. Go in the longer term. Uh, do you see potential in other markets outside the U.S. and to some extent Australia, where you are already yeah. present when it comes to troughs? Yeah, d- just brief explanation what troughs is. That's good. Uh, it's, it's traffic enforcement as a service. It's you could also call call it business processing outsourcing by governments and that's what we do in the United States so there we install equipment we maintain it we send out citations we collect the funds we distribute them between the cities and ourselves so the full uh, process is is by us uh, that is something we now slowly start seeing also coming coming into new regions like for instance in Tasmania in Australia where we do not 100% of it but part of it there is a tender coming out in the Netherlands, where also very similarly a lot of these uh, parts in the process have been have been outs- or will be outsourced, I should say. So that's in the developing markets. In new markets like in Ghana, where we uh, closed the contract with the government there for the entire traffic enforcement for the entire country nationally, that would be the exact same model as what how we do it in the United States. So in developing markets, it's they they basically skip skip a few steps and they go immediately to this model in the developing market it, it goes step by step towards the uh, the business model as we see it in the united states mm. uh, w- what is the driver behind that, this is it co- is it lower costs or is it the fact that you take the investment up front and and just deliver the revenues what would you say is the key driver here yeah i think uh, it's both so it's it's the investments we do the investments uh, so the, the, the local governments don't have to do that. It's also the know-how which we have because we have proven to be able to do that in the United States and in other parts. And it's also call it uh, bums on seats, as they say. So it's it's civil servants that instead of doing this manually, if you outsource it, uh, 
typically a third party can do it in a more efficient way. Mm. That's good. Um, you said that you had had some uh, some uh, good progress in in the Middle East and and in in uh, Saudi Arabia, where the contract you have had for a while now now yeah. kind of came back into the PNL. Do you. It seems you're moving towards the end of this contract when it comes to deliveries. Do you foresee potential of uh, service and maintenance revenues for these these kind of contracts <coughs> going forward? Yeah, yeah. If, if you recall, we at some time we had to inform the market about the fact that the contract was temporarily paused, and it was uh, because lack of cars over the over the COVID period, and lack of drivers, that we we surpassed that, and now we started uh, the final deliveries on the contract which is the remaining 25% of a 275 million contract, that will be now executed until the end of the year. So that, that's really good. Then we will have about 1 million, or sorry, 1,200 in-vehicle systems, uh, uh, which we delivered in the market in Saudi. They need maintenance, they need calibrations and so forth. I can see, probably that's gonna be your next question. Do you see any, any further revenues coming out of it? Yes, because if you have that many systems in a market, you can bet on the fact that do the maintenance and the calibrations locally by the OE OEM is a much more preferable solution for any governmental mm. customer. So I can I can see that happening in the, in the near future. Mm. And that will create some <coughs> recurring revenues on the base of your installed yeah. base. Uh, uh, totally right. Yeah. These systems typically stay in the market for. Uh, I would say at least at least 10 years mm -hmm. and over that 10 years you can generate uh, mm -hmm. lots of recurring mm -hmm. revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you have uh, you, you have ha landed this very very large order to the Swedish Trafikverket. Uh, excuse my, my uh, pronunciation there. Uh, the, the work on this order, how is that progressing and can you say anything about the timing, what you think of revenue recognition when it comes to the Trafikverket order? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's an order of, believe it or not, 850 million Swedish kroner, which is the largest order in the history of automated traffic enforcement anywhere. And we won it, and we're very pleased with it. Uh, but once you complete the, 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 the current contract, or the previous contract was completed, you start all over again with a tender, meaning we have to recertify the system, basically, which is a kind of a complex thing to do, time-consuming, a lot of the whole team in, 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 the, in the Swedish uh, office is working on it, They're doing a great job. But what then happens next is you have to deliver a prototype to Traffic Fairgate. So that's the first sort of re revenue generating uh, moment, which we passed. Next phase there is to a, uh, uh, do what we call the golden sample. So now it has to be proven to be fully delivering on, the, on issuing the citation. So we're projecting that to come in in the beginning of the year, somewhere in the Q1. So that's another revenue generating moment. And from there on, you, you go into the rollout of replacing the infrastructure here in Sweden with the new system. And, and we're gonna add new system on top of that as well. So that is actually what, what this means. And that's gonna be over a number of years. And then once these systems are installed, you move also into a maintenance phase. So m replacing systems, adding more systems, and maintenance are the sort of three uh, revenue streams we can start seeing coming in in the, in the near future, uh, over the coming years. Mm -hmm. The contract in full will last for a period of 12 years, which is similar to what we have in the Netherlands. Really good to have a baseline level of, of, of mm -hmm. revenue coming in for the, for the, for the coming 12 mm -hmm. years, which is uh, very good for us. Mm -hmm. Is the progression <coughs> in line with what you expected when you made this? Yes, yes. And that's, as I said before, because of the dedication of the team in Sweden and, and also the, the intrinsic knowledge about the customer and the requirements we have uh, in the office in, in Sweden. Yeah. Um, moving over <coughs> the Atlantic, you have presence in, in the US over the, as we said, the trust model. Can you elaborate uh, very short, because there's a lot to say there, but let's keep it short. Yeah. Can you elaborate on the recent events on the political front in, in the US when it comes to your business? Yeah, I mean, politically what we see happening is that the number of fatalities in traffic in the US is increasing. And that's, you know, against what one would expect. So what you now see also may be driven by, by the democratic uh, government is they made available funds to, to, to curb that. So we see states like Connecticut, like Florida, like California opening up for new or, or forms of, of, of enforcement. So we do school zone uh, enforcement now in, in, or can be done in, in Florida, speed enforcement done in California and so forth. So 
there is definitely political momentum going on in uh, in the United States about you know on, on the traffic automated traffic enforcement side. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that sounds very good. <coughs> to sum up, Ivo, which are your priorities in the near term future? Well, I mean, it's, uh, I mentioned it quite a few times before, is that we're pushing the trust model because that is actually giving us the, uh, the recurring revenue and specifically in the United States, so that's a, a focus area, but also in new territories, uh, of course, and we're pushing you know, towards a new uh, roadside platform, which we call Flux. So those are the, the main objectives to achieve in the, in the short term. Thank you very much for coming here and visiting, visiting us. Thank you. Thank you. Very young.